Thank you, one and all. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mitchell Pioneer Scholar Jessica Boyle to the stage. Good evening. Thank you so much for having me here tonight. Growing up, I moved two to three times a year. Every few months, I was the new student with a new teacher in a new home. It's hard to say precisely where I'm from. Through all of those moves, though, I always lived in central Maine. It is definitely safe to say I'm from Maine. My mother was 18 when she had me. She wasn't done with high school, she wasn't married, she certainly wasn't ready to have a, have a child. We moved around so often for what I imagine are a variety of reasons, mostly financial. But I made many of those moves on my own, to group homes, and as I got older, to friends spare bedrooms and couches. By the time I was 16, I had more or less moved out of my mother's care, and by the time I was 17, I was officially considered an unaccompanied homeless youth. Fortunately, I attended Bangor High School for four years, a wonderful school that gave me access to the kind of teachers you read about in stories. It was my yearbook advisor who teamed up with a school social worker and found me a housing program for homeless youth. And it was my honors chemistry teacher who made sure I applied to Colby College, where I ultimately enrolled. They helped me pay for the SATs and gave me rides to my college interviews. They were there to help me with the little things that would have otherwise been insurmountable obstacles. Through all of this and after, though, I was still very much on my own. Enter the Mitchell Institute. <clears throat> now I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge how lucky I am to be a Mitchell Scholar. I graduated high school with a class of some 450 people, many of them brilliant and deserving of the Mitchell Scholarship. But the Institute chose me. I do not take this honor lightly, and I'm pretty sure there's a guardian angel out there looking after me. Her name might be Mary Mitchell Friedman. <laughs> when I received the letter announcing that I had become Bangor's newest Mitchell Scholar, and Penobscot County's newest Key Bank Mitchell Scholar, I did not yet realize the extent of the gift I'd received. I attended my first institute event exactly seven years ago in this very room. I was here to receive the first Janet Fraser Mitchell Pioneer Award, and I was seated at the head table between Janet Mitchell herself and keynote speaker Doris Kearns Goodwin. Talk about nerve wracking. What's more, this was my first fancy dinner ever. I had no idea what to make of the table settings in front of me. I'm left-handed. My fellow lefties in the room might understand my dilemma. Needless to say, I shared a few drinks with Janet that night. <laughs> I literally kept drinking from her glass. I couldn't stop. I tell this story fairly often, not just because it's funny, but for me, because it perfectly illustrates this dramatic turn my life had taken. Here I was, this unrefined, overlooked, but nevertheless hardworking young lady from Maine. And the Mitchell Institute had just plucked me up and given me a world of opportunity. And the Institute was there through my initial stumbles, from navigating that fancy dinner table to supporting me with unwavering confidence when I took a semester off from Colby. After an initial period of self-doubt and acclimation, they helped me shine. At Colby, I'll be blunt. I was in no way prepared for the world I encountered when I arrived on campus. I brought a very unique background to a place that is otherwise fairly homogenous. As I got to know my peers, sharing certain things became uncomfortable. Talking about our parents' professions, for instance, or comparing where our summer homes were located. 
It quickly became a minefield through which I had to navigate carefully. Not so much because I was embarrassed to share my, share my story, but because of the way my peers reacted when I told it. These early experiences were the reason why I decided to withdraw from college. At that point, I seriously questioned whether I belonged there. However, with the encouragement of key people at both Colby and the Institute, I returned to Colby the next semester determined to make a change. I believe that all high-performing students deserve the opportunity to attend a great school. And I wanted to make sure that low-income and first-generation college students at small, predominantly upper-middle-class schools like Colby got the support they needed to successfully navigate that challenging environment. So I began chipping away at policies that hindered success in creating and building programs that would promote it. This effort evolved from a personal project to a student government task force and led to many leadership opportunities on campus that allowed me to ensure that these changes would live beyond my tenure as a student. By the time I graduated, the first generation program was in place, complete with funding, staff, and literature. Throughout this journey, I found myself slowly adopting a new family of my own. Janet Mitchell, who lives near Colby, introduced me to the rest of her family in the area. Bill and Vicki, Bethany, Paul and Yvette, all of whom are here today. From the day I met Janet in 2007 and in the years since, this family has shown me the concern caring and compassion that I had otherwise been lacking in my life. They shared their home with me every Thanksgiving and checked in on my progress throughout the year. They were who I called when I got into my first car accident <laughs> and who I called when I was given the opportunity to sit on a committee with Colby's Board of Trustees. For the first time in my life, I had a family with whom I could both celebrate my accomplishments and work through my struggles. Without them and without the rest of the Mitchell Institute, I would not be where I am today. It's hard to know how to say thank you because really how do you adequately thank someone for giving you the priceless gift of home and belonging? The Mitchell Institute has been important in many parts of my life. Most recently, I received a Mitchell Fellowship to help me prepare for the GREs. I'm in the process of applying to some of the most competitive graduate programs in the country where even the cost of applying is prohibitive. I'll be competing with students who, for the most part, can afford all the prep in the world. I'm proud to say that thanks to the support, my support from the Institute, I am happy to report that in both the verbal and analytical writing section of the GRE, I scored in the 97th percentile. <laughs> so I look forward to pursuing advanced studies in education leadership to do my part in ensuring that a college education is a realistic opportunity for everyone, not just a lucky few. I think many people forget that talent can be found anywhere, anywhere. And because we forget that, we experience a loss of their potential, their intellectual capital, and the possibilities they bring to the table. It's the Mitchell Institute and those who support it who are mitigating this loss in Maine. They are making sure that even people like me, an unaccompanied homeless youth, from central Maine are able to go as far as our potential will take us. We need more organizations like that in the world. We need more people like you in the world. Thank you. <laughs>